Hey, and welcome back to another episode of the Girl Boss Method podcast, hosted by myself, Richie Bra. So for today, we are going to be discussing this topic, the title, which is what can we trust online versus what does the research say? So this was a question that was brought to my attention by one of the girls from inside the program. And again, it was definitely centered around her joining the program, but also trying to understand what she can trust out there because quite often um you know when you're looking up ideas or answers on the internet we all head straight to google we head to like fitness magazines and articles or what your friend said and and all of those sorts of things and i think it's really important that we kind of hit this one the nail on the head with this one um because unfortunately, the health and fitness industry is out there, obviously, to help inspire people and you'd hope to educate them, etc. A lot of the time, it's about grab and grow, go punchlines and trying to think of new ways and best ways of, of trying to, I don't know, make things easier or sound more um, fancy. Um, I think quite often people think that there is like they're missing a trick when it comes to health, fitness and nutrition. And often that can be the case. And I would say that it's mostly because of the amount of misinformation out there. So when you are looking at things online, um, there definitely can be a lot of, uh, there's an abundance of information around and, Again, as I said, whether that's something you saw on a TV program or in a fitness magazine or your friends said it, et cetera. The issue that we have is that, especially for women such as ourselves that are in our thirties and and like forties, that there are more specific um, challenges, more health challenges as well. There's different things that we are trying to navigate. We're you know, as women, we're trying to navigate our own like menstrual cycles. So we know that there's been lots of stuff online about, well, what's what's the best way to train or eat during your menstrual cycle? Um, again, lots of these things are hooks and, and um, fish lines and hooks and whatever. But it really does come down to personalize, like things making sense for you the individual, like things that are going to help you get the goals that you you want to achieve. Um, again, help you with making the right decisions, uh, the tailored decisions actually around your health, fitness and, and nutrition goals, whether that's um, based on your like lifestyle, like roadblocks in the way, or even like your belief system, or even your like level of education and things when it comes to these Uh, different ways as well so obviously we need to think about or or identify well how do we know what's actually trustworthy and how do we know what's you know like not basically so I'm gonna go through that I mean firstly when we will talk about common fitness and nutrition uh, myths within this as well um but again when it comes to online platforms or online information out there especially when we're picking out things from these ma- sort of mainstream um mainstream or even opinionated platforms there can be a lot of personal influence in there um people may lack any formal credentials or or even education um again that misinformation it's just it's the way that it's presented as well so um a lot of online health advice is either not actually evidence based or it directly contradicts the scientific research and studies actually suggest that up to 90% of the most shared articles and social media networks contain some form of 
health misinformation. Uh, So for example, yes, trendy diets and miracle cures. Um, Again, these frequently lack scientific support and yeah, they can be harmful as well. So how do you know what's credible? Well, ideally, I'd like to think that you, firstly, you approach a coach that is qualified and insured. Perhaps maybe you ask them the questions about, you know, what what they've done and, and what's their background, what's their education, what's their experience of working with, with women, for example, working with women in your age group or, you know, with some of the struggles that you face yourself. So has your coach been through those things and are they educated as well? Did they uh, did they just do a couple of short courses and that was it? Or, or have they spent time actually becoming a professional and an expert in their field? Um, again, especially when it comes to things like nutrition. And yes, we do make things simplified, but I feel like simple and personable is, is definitely the best approach. But we also have to look at some of the biases out there as well, especially when you're just grabbing going different, you know, things that you see online. So it's it's definitely really important to be mindful of that as well. Um, I mean, if it was great that we we all knew how to understand research again, even with looking at research, we can uh, look at and become opinionated with them and how many things online actually are carefully evaluated or even peer reviewed, um, you know, beyond, beyond a, a column that you, you've seen in a, in a magazine or, or a, a TikTok or something you've seen from someone. So at the end of the day, we know that this is like short form, it's easy to digest content, but I think it's always worth looking at whether it's credible and you're always welcome to reach out to me and ask me, is this true? Um, because I'd love to discuss it in more detail, etc. As you know, I'm sure if you've come across any of my other videos and stuff, um, I am educated. I've got like 20 years experience within the fitness industry as well. So I've been through various different areas like health as well, like worked in physio clinics and rehab centers and within the world of sort of health and, and exercise, um, actually coaching sports as well. So there's teaching exercise classes and then also like with my nutrition, I've been through my own journey, but I'm also educated in nutrition as well. I'm certified and insured. Uh, Again, there's, yeah, I mean, I'm I'm telling you to trust me, but yeah, you should. Anyway, (laughs) we're going to go through common fitness and nutrition myths because let's make this a bit more fun, shall we? So again, some of the typical things that we might see is carbs are bad for weight loss. And so again, what might we see when when people sort of say carbs are bad? They might tell you that if they are on a weight loss journey, they are going to cut carbs. Well, carbohydrates are actually a, a, you know, they're a necessary part of a balanced diet. And um it also depends on the quality of carbs as well, you know, whole versus refined and, you know, how that matters more as well. And, you know, whole grains are essential for, for a balanced diet and can help aid in that weight management. What a lot of people don't realize is that carbs, um, they, they contain some, you know, they've got fiber as well. So you've got different types of fiber, soluble, insoluble fiber. You've got different types of carbs as well in, in terms of, you know, how these are uptaked and um, by the body in terms of, you know, slow release and, and fast release, et cetera. So you, you may have heard of all the sort of low GI hygiene stuff as well. But when it comes to it, I think, yes, we can opt for healthy, wholesome carbohydrates as opposed to all the refined stuff. Even when we're thinking about that and we're thinking about, I don't know, let's say all oh, bread and cakes and biscuits and stuff. A lot of the time, it's not the fact that those equal those those things and, oh my goodness, they have sugar, et cetera. They're also laced with other calories as well. So maybe even like fat calories as well. And again, they're, they're laced with energy. And if you're somebody that's trying to lose weight, it might be better 
allocating your energy intake to foods that are going to help sustain your hunger better um, and also help, you know, manage all the other things that might come in addition to those sort of stuff as well. Sort of sort of like the the feeling, I don't know, sluggish after them or, you know, low on energy once you've had that big energy surge and, and crash, et cetera. So just worth um again thinking about that. So yes, whole grain consumption and fat loss. Um so yes they can be good okay so don't think that all carbs are bad and yeah more gym time equals more results so this is an interesting one so the quality and the cons consistency of your workout often outweigh the quantity so consistency and workout intensity are more important than the duration and actually overtraining can lead to exhaustion and injuries and so again, this comes from the whole thing of, uh, you know, and quite often this comes from people not adequately, um, nu you know, supporting their nutrition and their their energy intake, etc. So again, you know, when you when we're thinking about optimized physical activity or you know, cardio respiratory fitness and and muscular strength, etc. When we're thinking about all of these things, the, the research actually supports the benefits of shorter, consistent resistance training sessions for fat loss and muscle gain. And that's because there is something called recovery as well. And doing more doesn't always equal better. And doing more can lead to like burnout. It can make you feel bored. It can make it feel like psychologically just like, oh God, I've got to go and do that. And look, Grant, it's some people absolutely love being in the gym six days a week, like crack on, that's fine. But for the most of us that have, you know, life goals as well, we've got jobs, we've got families to support, etc. It's just not realistic. And honestly, I would say three to four times a week, 45 minutes a session to an hour, that is all you need. And when we think about the grand scheme of things, it's also the activity that we're doing outside of the planned exercise so again how we're handling our nutrition and how we are handling our neat our non-exercise thermogenesis so the ability of you know our body to utilize and, and use calories when we are doing all sorts of other manner of things as well mm. this one i honestly i have I've seen so much of this um, running being the best tool for weight loss. So what we do know about running is that, yes, it's beneficial for cardiovascular health, but it's not the most effective weight loss tool. Um, and also this could be due to the increase in appetite, the uh, increase in trying to uh, recover as well as a recovery aspect. You need to be able to support running. I'm a big believer that when it comes to running, it's not just the action of running. You need to be able to have the endurance capability and the recovery as well when it comes to running. It's great. Running is brilliant. Running is free. Running is something you can do mindlessly, something you can do to escape the world. Um, it makes you feel amazing. But what I need you to remember is that running can be supportive in terms of especially if you are somebody that doesn't really get the option or the opportunity to to do um much activity over the course of the day it can actually be a tool to help in a sense that yes there are some calories that are being burned but it's not the answer and the cause and the the best route for weight loss we need to consider yes combining the cardio with the strength training but be mindful when it comes to eating. So you want to be able to support your weight loss journey whilst managing sort of hunger as well. And I'm always going to say a calorie deficit does not need to be extreme. Everything is about energy balance. So that's a, a note on there. And, and then again, we've got the evidence uh, review as well in terms of how that affects um, appetite and energy intake. So high protein diets damage your kidneys. So high protein diets are actually safe for healthy adults, may I say healthy and crucial for muscle repair and growth. 
So when we're thinking about protein in healthy individuals, it's totally fine. And again, we know what the benefits of high protein diets are. They are, um, they're more thermic. So you're going to actually utilize the calories better. They help preserve lean muscle tissue. They help with um, satiety levels. They help, you know, with that fullness, basically. So it's important to have that balanced diet and include those healthy lean protein sources. So especially when we're thinking about weight loss, fat loss, journey, toning, whatever it is, protein is important. Um, it won't damage your kidneys unless you have a kidney issue, in which case that is something that you need to have a chat with your doctor or consultant or whoever looks after your health in, in that respect. So, um, but yeah, when it comes to healthy individuals, it's, it's totally fine. And it's, it's got many functions. And again, I don't promote massively high protein diets. I mean, again, does it, it, it depends on how high is the protein? Um, and the recommendations are sort of, again, 1.4, 1.6, upward to about 2.2 grams of protein per kilogram of body weight. So let's say, well, we could even do the maths on this right now. So let's say that you weighed 70 kilos and we went for the low end of protein. We're looking at about 98 grams of protein. That's not really that hard to hit even as a vegan individual such as myself it's not difficult uh you want to think again 20 to 30 grams around each meal if you're having three meals maybe a snack per day it's actually quite easy to hit and yes we've got all the wonderful convenience and stuff foods to help us do that um, and then if we're looking at the higher end again this this might be something that we might drill into a very extreme scenario where someone is going for quite uh, drastic weight loss, um, especially when it's trying to trying to preserve that lean muscle tissue. And typically, maybe even in individuals that are, are prone to, to muscle loss, so whether it's older individuals, um, maybe even individuals that don't, yeah, may, maybe even like physical athletes as well, you know, that are competing in, I don't know, let's say, uh, weight making sports, etc. It will be quite important. And even when we think of the top end, two point two grams of protein per kilogram of body weight for a seventy kilo individual, we're looking at about one hundred and fifty four. So not massively, massively high. Um, so yeah, okay. And then this one, the next one is. Um, Dietary supplements are necessary for good health. No, dietary supplements should actually complement. They shouldn't replace a nutrition nutritious diet. Um, so most nutritional needs should be met through food. However, supplements are beneficial when specific deficiencies exist. So when we're thinking about this um, and we're thinking about supplements, Vitamin D, for example, it's actually really difficult for us to obtain um, when you're living in a poor, poorly, uh, poor weather, you know, when you're living in England and it's just gray all the time or you're stuck indoors and you don't really get much sun time. Um, I think it's really important for us. It's one of the reasons why you should get out and do your steps outdoors. Again, exposing the skin is really helpful for absorbing um, vitamin D, but when you are lacking, when you are have a darker skin complexion, so maybe you're more tanned like myself, um, you've got Asian or black heritage, it will be harder for you to obtain the vitamin D. And, and typically we are vitamin D deficient as a nation, full stop in England. So that's probably a great time to use the supplement because there will be um, a deficiency present and other periods or, or times where it would be really helpful to supplement are when you are in a calorie deficit so if your calories are not 
um, you know, you're in a reduced energy intake, you're in a deficit, it's going to be harder for you to be able to get everything you need. So again, supplements can help maybe even certain times of the year as well, when we're predisposed to having those things. And again, when it even comes to things like immunity, believe it or not, yes, supplements help, but also things like protein. I feel like that's a fact that is just not talked about enough. So again, I wanted to talk about this, actually, the role of fiber and vegetables. So especially again, we're talking, we're coming back to, you know, people wanting to cut out like carbs and stuff like that, right? Fiber is crucial for our digestive health and it helps manage weight again by increasing satiety levels and, and improving cardiovascular health as well. Um, we've got the nutrition reviews, a, a website or um, somewhere that this evidence has been pulled from. Um, the role of dietary fiber in satiety, glucose regulation and diabetes risk. So again, fiber intake by adding this, you know, adding things like legumes to salads or eating whole fruits and choosing whole grains, etc. We are going to be helping tick off, you know, the fiber box as well. And ultimately, you know, again, when we're thinking about the myths, et cetera, and the information, like trusting things, we want to try and opt for something that helps us maintain a balanced lifestyle. That's that's going to just be everything. You want to make sure that things are really um, specific and, and tailored to you as well. And this is where I can help. You know, this is what I'm here for. Um, and when we're picking things online again, is it trendy? Is it something that's just popular in the type for the time being? Uh, did you hear it on a certain podcast that everyone seems to rave about at the moment? Um, definitely not the girl boss method, but another one out there by, by a certain individual. Um, again, there's so many people out there that just, you know, they'll have guests come on and a lot of the time it's very opinionated. And you could even say that I'm opinionated. I think it's just inherently how we are as humans. We have, we form opinions about things that we see, read and experience. Um, so I think, again, when it comes to getting advice, it really does have to align with you as well. Anyway, if you've got any questions, you can ask away in the group or DM me if private. And if you've just stumbled across this, this podcast, um, this has been the Girl Boss Method. And you can follow me on Instagram at Richu Bra. And we will see you here next time.